I have no idea what's going on, but as far as I saw from the title, <laughs> is it apparently Minchidu's reveal or ritual? I'm not so sure which. What do you mean? And welcome. My name is Shisha Anime. Welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. Now, I am loving this game so much. I, I love it to pieces. It's, it's just so funny. I, I, I love this game. So, we are going to continue right back into this with a little flick of the wrist and a bit of my drink. So, guys, you can be sure. あ、そうだ。一応皮膚に保護のためのクリームを塗り塗りと。で、では。これを頭に Scan the burn. <laughs> Bleaching is a bitch. But I don't remember it being that bad. Although it's not uncommon to hear someone who acts in bizarre or stupid ways described as a space alien as a general rule, the aliens I've seen in movies possessed advanced intelligence surpassing humanities. In some, they're even depicted as virtual gods, manipulating genetic sequences to control human evolution. Do aliens exist? If you ask scientific authorities on the subject, they'll tell you in all likelihood yes. But just as the children's eyes begin to sparkle, scientists tack on a malicious afternote. Not that they're anything like what you're thinking. Mm, well, no, we don't know what aliens would be like, really, because we haven't met one yet, as far as we know. Even if we do find some alien water flea wriggling around at a distant planet, I can't imagine it'll inspire a passionate response from the general public. Yeah. The people don't want to rip off like that for their E.T. What they want is a simple buy the book alien. And I can hear her screaming. Although I've experienced a wide range of auditory stimuli in my time, this is quite the ear splitting shriek. There's considerable distance between me and the source, so there's no damage to my eardrums. But if I had to approach, I'd need to prepare myself a pretty decent set of earmuffs. <laughs> Compared to the 120 decibels produced by the engine of a civilian aircraft, <laughs> this is no match in pure volume. When you consider the sheer unpleasantness factor, it's a pretty competitive match. What do you mean, Makina? Again? Mind explaining what's going on? <laughs> yeah, okay. How long is a while? Several days? Weeks? Yeah, it's not that big. Alright, it just takes a while, okay. What exactly is that woman doing? Other than shrieking like a banshee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's totally possible. Michiru's ritual then, I did read it right. Communicating with the stars, eh? I see. Plausible. That woman is definitely a little out of the ordinary. <laughs> Her cranium, okay. I don't think you should necessarily talk. She doesn't know what that means. Hmm. I'm somewhat interested in the nature of the ceremony. Let's take a look. Okay. Like that? Like what exactly? Okay, I see. Then I'll do just that. As I approach Michiru's room, I notice a strange stench in the air. This is foul. Some kind of gas? The membranes of my nose twitch in response. My body recalls the tension it's known in the field. I was trained to retain the capacity for action in a cloud of tear gas, but 
The irrepressible coughing and running nose, the pain in your eyes, and the irritation of your skin will always lower your effectiveness. No, my mistake. This isn't gas. I thought it might have been dispersed pepper spray. But that seems to have been a misjudgment. Yep. The odour is terrible, but it's not dense enough to affect my... Mitru's diary. She's dying. What's this? The ceremony Makina was talking about? She is definitely bleaching her hair. I know that. It hurts. What's that supposed to mean? The ceremony doesn't. Don't tell me it involves human sacrifice. I hope not. When you think of human sacrifice, the mind civilization is what comes to mind. Oh, oh. Okay, in order to offer a tribute to the God of the Sun, it said that they would paint a human being blue and gouge out their still being hot. Yes. Yes. But ceremonies like that should have been ancient history by now. And in the first place, we're in Japan here, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's also true. It's hard to believe, but if Minchuri happens to have painted her body blue, then it's bingo. What? She's emerged. I immediately tumbled my way across the hall with a skillful shoulder roll. Hide myself in the shadows and silence the sound of my breath. <laughs> I don't remember this much. Is this moment I know fear? <laughs> I know fear. Oh my god. That's brilliant. Not the fear of death or the fear of darkness. This is in fact a variety of terror completely new to me. To explain its nature concisely. What the hell is this? Mitsudo's body was not in fact dyed blue. Which is all well and good but... It was of cling to draped all around her head from inside. A mysterious sap drills out in globs. Oh man that's so painful. She's definitely bleached her hair. I've bleached my hair and it hurts! But not on that big a scale. I don't know how much hair she's done, but god damn. Do you know what? She probably does her eyebrows as well now that I think about it. Just as Makina said, Mitsuru's eerie. Irregular movements are reminiscent of a space alien. This must be the particular variety of terror that accompanies a close encounter of the third kind. I see what you did there. If I'm discovered, all bets are off. It's that sort of fear. Aww. Mutually wanders around the hallway with vacant eyes. Her cries are truly bizarre. Is she receiving the message? <laughs> or could that shriek itself be a transmission to the stars? I have. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Thanks for the funky dance. Mutually draws near. Her lips are trembling violently and her eyes seem to have rolled back in her head. Why is she going like a freaking Nico Parra girl now? That's literally just saying any, 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 That's literally what it is. It's any. Or a nyan, 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 All like that. She passes my hiding place and wanders off somewhere. It's been a long time since I wish so desperately from the bottom of my heart, please don't find me. She's left a slimy trail behind her. Like a slug, ew. I thought she was nothing more than a Sundare wannabe. <laughs> to think she'd conduct such a mysterious ritual? Clearly I need to handle her with more caution. Oh yes. <laughs> I'm lying on the ground. <laughs> Why am I on the ground? Hmm? If it isn't Sakaki, let me ask you instead. What are you doing standing up like that? As for me, I was just taking evasive action in response to a certain crisis. <laughs> she knows. I stand up brushing off the dust my clothes picked up during my roll across the floor. Incidentally, what are your thoughts on extraterrestrial life? I know it's a difficult question, but I want to organise my own thoughts on the matter. Please let me hear your opinion. <laughs> I'm still covered with the alien theory. So I can answer my son's question without hesitation. Oh wow. What? そして接触。Okay. Battle for survival, huh? Sometimes there's no room for any other choice. 
And there's an old saying, the first blow is half the battle. Ooh. I see where you're going with this. Any moment is crucial in battle. I really recognize Yumiko's voice from somewhere. Novel? Oh. We were talking about a book? Well, damn. I see. My bad. There was a reason, Yumiko, believe me! Hmm, crawling, is it? True, the low crawl that teach every SDF grunt is a method of advancing with your body pressed flat on the ground. So it's not surprising you'd see it that way. Was I literally laying on the floor to avoid being seen by her? God damn. But I didn't advance a sing even a single meter, now did I? Your powers of observation are still lacking, Sakagi Yumiko, my friend. That was what we call the prone position. Ah. So you weren't laying down. <laughs> I hope not, Sachi. Oh, Sachi. What? Were you, you were listening? That's fine. Sachi's anxious expression suggests he took my conversation with Sakaki completely seriously. I said it depends on the contents of Michidu's reports. If she really is sending transmissions into space, the contents will decide our fate. Ah, uh, human kind of ravages nature and slaughters innocent animals to eat their corpses. If the aliens learn of our savage ways, we won't kill them easy. Why are the aliens herbivores? If you want me, we can go watch the, co the crucial moment together. Okay. I love the voice acting in this. There you see. Be careful, get any closer and you'll be in danger. It is quite disturbing. Listen, observe a caution. Can you see how our eyes are rolled back? Oh my god, they've rolled back. Probably a sign she's under the control of the mother ship. <laughs> God damn. Well, it's only a hypothesis for the moment. <laughs> she may well be fighting with someone in the spirit world. But here we're merely spectators, so we can do nothing but watch over her back. <laughs> Why is Kazumi Yuji so funny? Then again, we can also interrupt this in a very different way. That's a dance. At a glimpse, it may look like she's going into convulsions. But there's also the possibility that she's simply working on her moves. <laughs> oh, come on! You don't even need to say that twice. If you think of it as a modern Japanese, a modern dance, why, why did I get Japanese from? God damn it, a modern dance expressing her inner self. I'd say this is actually pretty spot on. That's because she doesn't, she doesn't. I only really didn't pick up those cooking skills in a day either. Expertise is the result of hidden dedication to your craft. In other words, Mitsuru is sowing the seeds here and now for the future flying of artistic accomplishment. <laughs> this is too painful to watch. I'm gonna stay quiet. Shh, keep it quiet. <laughs> Don't read it, please, Abade. <laughs> I 
Doesn't it just bring a tear to your eye? <laughs> She's just leaving us to it. Don't you understand the magnificence of those movements? These steps express the terror of an invasion from outer space. Truly avant-garde. <laughs> <laughs> Philistine! To think you're frigid would extend to the fine arts as well. <laughs> Savagery is always. Oh, really? I think I made her mad. What a sad human being. Can't even appreciate this work of art. Or whatever it is. <laughs> Since I'm basically just making stuff up here. Okay. We bored yet? <laughs> I see. You're passionate. I'm bored, frankly. I got bored about two minutes in. <laughs> We're just leaving her to it. She never discovered that we was watching her. Good work. If you observe any dramatic changes with Michiri, make sure to report them to me. <laughs> yes, please. As I'm leaving, it occurs to me that Michiru's movements are also similar to those of a zombie. If that woman is in fact one of the undead, I suppose I'll have to put a bullet in her head. Well, uh, that rhymed as well. Compared to walking the earth as the living dead, I'm sure she would want it that way. <laughs> Aww. Jesus, that is nauseating. Poor Michidu. She may keep. Okay, is it the next day or the same day? When you take a walk like this, you realise just how wide a range of shops there is in town. In this town. Just for foods, we got butchers, fishmongers, greengrocers, and a convenience stores. That music does sound oddly quiet. Oh yeah, some of you were saying that it probably sounded a little quiet. I am sorry about that. Let me... Let me just raise it up a tad bit. That should make it a little better. There we go. Just for we've gotten butchers. Oh yeah, convenience stores. There's even two large supermarkets on either side of the station. In the town I was living in before, there was of course a shopping area. And its scale was adequate to avoid any problems in my daily life. But it was overall a pretty compact district. And most of the stories were small family owned business. Oh, uh, stores, sorry doesn't even bear comparison to what you find in a town fairly close to the metropolitan area like this one. I didn't intend to estimate the wealth of the town by its facade alone, but looking at the number of cheap retailers, the clothes, jewellery and other non-essential luxury goods, you'll naturally get an idea of this place's relatively high class population. Hmm, good observation. So, as for what I'm currently doing in this affluent town, I have been on my way to buy curtains for my windows, heading to a hardware store Armani told me about. Okay. Had been. Right past tense. I noticed a certain abnormality about 10 minutes ago, specifically someone was on my tail. Okay, who's behind me? I thought my imagination might have been acting up at first. When I abruptly changed my course, just to be safe, they came charging after me in a panic. There's no way this is a coincidence. It's Armony. I am calling it now, it's Armony. Or Machina. There are three pursuers. Machina, Sachi and Armony. They follow me in a group. Rather than dispersely individually, it's incredibly easy to tell. I pretended to look into the show win the show window of a shop along the streets. I casually glanced at their faces. But they weren't familiar in the slightest. And for a group with a grudge against my workplace, they seemed far too sloppy and dim witted. Basically they just looked like a bunch of juvenile delinquents. Okay. Although naughty lads like this exist in any town, it feels like you you actually find more of them in a well-off place like this. And they tend to be of a particularly ugly variety. Oh god. They say the poor can't afford manners. I find that living in a place where everything you need is dropped Excuse me. In your lap tends to twist people in its own way. Forget about hard work and it's easy to fall into a warped ways of thinking. Well then, what to do? What reason would they have to follow me around? To be for following me around. Although I've been thinking it for a while, nothing is coming to mind. In which case, it would probably be best to ask them directly. Guess I'll lure them into some nice dark out Oh brilliant. Here we go. Look around my surroundings perfectly casually. I am startled 
I am startled when something unexpected catches my eye. <laughs> Makina, hello! <laughs> so it's not Makina who's chasing us. Shit. Why did she have to appear at this of all times? <laughs> no, it's nothing. Are you alone? Where's Armini? Come on, Makina, we need to run. Harmony said that? Cheeky girl. Oh, what can I do about this shrimp? At this rate, she might get mixed up in this. I thrust my hand into the rear pocket of my school uniform, pull out three 10,000 yen nose rolled up with a rubber band. Oh my. It's hot today, isn't it, Makina? Feel like, I feel like some ice cream? I'll make an exception. I mean, he doesn't know. It won't hurt. Her. I really want ice cream. Can you go buy some? Please. I'll explain it to Amine so she won't get mad at you. Okay. I take Makina's hand and forcibly close it around the thirty thousand yen. Really? I'm going ahead and use to change to dabble in the stock market. Oh my! <laughs> I don't know, that's that's quite a bit of money. I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> anyway, ice cream. Head over to the Baskin Robinson. Uh, Baskin Robinson, okay. On the other side of the station. Make mine a caramel ribbon. Papong Street Shower Double. What's that? Double or triple or whatever is fine. Get what you want. Oh. Oh, please don't point out the people behind me. What? She's quick. Because I'm too embarrassed to go into that place. Oh, get going. Ah, uh, that's Amane. That's Amane right there. Amane says that? Yep, thought so. Cheeky girl. <laughs> okay. With who? While watching Manic Mac in a trot for the money clenched in her hand, I exhale slightly. Like, They're behind me. <sighs> the bunch following me doesn't show any signs of chasing after Mac and her money. In other words, they're not after me for my cash. If it's not a robbery, I guess that would leave a personal grudge or some sort of class resentment. Either way, not a particularly welcome situation. No, it's not particularly welcome. Well, whatever. After watching Makina disappear, I find an alley between the cleaners and the liquor store. And casually turn into it as if talk taking a shortcut. She knows what I'm doing. Makina knows. I know she knows because she's saying idle chit chat. So she knows I'm being followed. So come on, guys. Come and get me. Come on. You're all useless, god damn, it's easy to tell. They are a very bad team. Man beats the one with the actual knowledge here. Oh god. Hey there. <laughs> Hi guys. How are you in this certain day? Oh, I'm gonna hide it. Hmm. Uh, behind those beer cases? You need something? C's gotta be the middle guy. B's gotta be this guy and A's that guy. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, it is. What about it? Over my uniform? Why would you do that? Okay. Hey now, you're scaring me. 
Please stop. I can't stand violence. <laughs> <laughs> Our job? Job? Oh. So we got a knife, a taser, and a bat. No, a lip pipe. In the apparent attempt to intimidate me, the man fires a flashy burst of sparks from a stun gun in his hand. The discharge of electrical, electrical energy scorches particles of dust in the atmosphere. A burning smell fills the air, prickling the depths of my nose. I close my eyes. In the next moment, a siren rings out in my head. I'm in pouring rain, pushing through the mud at my feet, a taste of iron spreading through my mouth. That's blood. Hiding my body from the light of flares, a knife died black in my hand, swallowing down my heart as it tries to leap out of my mouth. If you want to protect something, first protect yourself. Yes. <laughs> it seems the time has come to make use of my super self-defense technique. <laughs> <laughs> you should be saying that yourself, you fat bastard. As the man raises his stun gun and takes a fighting stance, I draw a huge breath into my eyes. To be honest though, the fat guy does look like he has some muscle on, so I can't really say much. And ringing out my voice to the limit, I scream. HELP ME! Damn it! Who's looking up? Uh oh. SOMEONE HELP! CALL THE POLICE! No! The man's stun gun. Yeah, Man C is this guy then. Oh, damn it. So he's not Man C, it's gotta be Man B. Man Come on, this has gotta be Man B, surely. This is Man A then. The man's stun gun discharges a threatening pale bluish arc of electricity in my general direction. I reach out and gently grasp his outthrust hand as they're trying to shake. Oh! Oh. Guess that's about what you'd expect. Ah! In this narrow alley, all three can't attack me at once. Ooh, that's why I went down here. Maybe he planned for this sort of cramped space, or maybe it's just a coincidence from prioritizing ease of concealment. <sighs> Excuse me. Either way, the iron pipe in the man with the black tank top's hand is cut. Very short, not well suited for disabling me with a single blow. No, it's definitely not. It's designed for a beating. That said, the guy next to him with the knife isn't much use either. It might look the most dangerous out of the bunch at a glance, but a weapon like that is actually a hindrance. If he's not planning to kill me, yeah, it's just in the way. In this situation, the flashiest, easiest weapon to use is also the most effective. The stun gun can stop me dead with a single attack. True. The ideal would be to fire off a single shot to eliminate my mobility and crush my fighting spirit, then have all three surround me and beat me senseless. Yeah. Hey, damn it! <laughs> you fucking homo or something. Jods. <laughs> now that's just rude. I don't go around holding hands with men for f for the fun of it. Though it looks like a casual light grasp. Truth is I've got a hold of his vital point. Of the hand he's holding the stun gun with. When I put pressure on this exact spot, he, can, he can't push or pull as long as he's maintaining his grip. Oh. So basically he can't do anything. Oh, clever. If he were to pull back hard using the weight of his body, he could rip his hand free. I'm controlling the center of gravity as well. So that's sadly not an option. Oh wow. Can't do it. It's not like I'm grabbing you that hard. You just like the monkey with his hand stuck in the jar. <laughs> Might as well just drop the banana, right? In my words, the man's firm grip in the stun gun weakens for just in it. Ah, right, here we go. In a moment, I feel the loosening of his proximal phanalax boat. Why? We're getting sizey here. I twist the wrist sharply upward. I dig my thumb hard into the side of his. Oh! Yeah! By first extending the joints of his wrist, the attacking, then attacking them with the pinpoint pressure of my finger, I completely disabled his ability to maintain a grip. The stun gun slips out of his hand. Whoops. Catching the stun gun as it falls from the man's side, I jerk his arm upward to immobilize his elbow. Oh god! Then push him hard against a pile of beer cases stacked along the wall. Yay! He dead! <laughs> These guys just don't know what to do. So, you wanna go? I mash the man's face against the beer case while maintaining my incapitating wrist hold. In the next moment, I push the stun gun against the scruff of his neck and throw the switch without hesitation. God! One down. Here, catch. <laughs> Did I chuck it to him? As the next man raises short iron pipe. So he is A. I was right about him being A then. Okay. 
That's B. I've, I didn't think anyone else could be B other than him. Above his head, like a hammer. I probably tossed a stun gun in his direction. Ah, I drew his attention away so I can kick him up. The man reached us out in a panic to try and receive the stun gun. It's been a while since I've seen such a bunch of clowns. I kicked my knee up sharply into his virtually defenseless abdomen. Oh, yeah. Yep, there we go, he's down. Instantly dubbing on over his belly in an instinctive attempt to protect the place he's been attacked, the man's chin sticks out as if he's begging to be kicked, and then you kick him up. Well, if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not its not really far from the truth. The air that was in the man's lungs squirts out through his nose and his eyes roll back in his head. He crumbles face first onto the ground. I'll give you two seconds. Drop the knife. One. Two. He's gone. <laughs> the man throws the knife in his hand aside and stumbles backward in a blind panic trying to escape. And where are you going? A quickly trampled down hit on his foot from above sealing his movement. Oh! And then strike hard at the base of his throat with the joint in my right foot. Oh! Oh! No, that's evil. That's basically choking. His throat crushed in the middle of a breath. The man momentarily compressed treachery sticks shut under the inward pressure of his from his lungs, rendering breathing temporarily impossible. Yes. <laughs> Clever. As the man claws desperately at his throat, his eyes bulge open wide and he releases a flood of tears. He falls with a thud onto his backside. I don't think we we were done with our chat. Have to be patient, kid, and listen to what others have to say. Or you won't get any snacks, okay? Glides the side along at the man as he grasps his throat with both hands and flails his legs on the ground. I crouch down and pick up the knife he tossed away. Well, if, you're, if your throat happens to get cut, you won't be able to eat your snack anyway, I guess. Gosh, I've got questions. I'll give you so kind as to answer. Oh, he has no choice. <laughs> what? Can't talk? Want me to open a hole in your lung? It'll release that air pressure so you can breathe nice and easy. The man responds to my offer but violently shaking his head from side to side. Don't worry, you've got two perfectly good lungs. Getting a hole poked in one won't kill you. Well, he's, he, that's not wrong. That's fucked up and it's not wrong. As I stand looking down on him with the knife in one hand, the man scrabbles desperately at the ground, trying to put some distance between us. Seriously, where do you think you're going? You want me to make it physically impossible for you to run? Just answer my questions. First question, who gave you the orders? One of you said this was your job, right? But you didn't show any interest in a little girl with money in her hand, so it wasn't just a stick-up. Somebody asked you, right, to beat the shit out of me in particular. <laughs> Screwed up. Should have talked to him instead of you. Still grasping his knife in my hand, I glanced back at the man with the bandana. He's flattened his, on the asphalt, his eyes rolled all the way back in his head, drawling from the mouth. Well, whatever. Next question. Did you come after me knowing who I am? Do you know my name? I believe you. Oh, that's as expected. First thing those guys asked me about was the, was the Mihama uniform. That's evidence that they were targeting a male Mihama Academy student rather than Kazumi Yuji. That said, I'm the only male student at Mihama Academy at the moment. Ultimately, I was the specific target, yeah. But considering the bunch of clowns I send, it's hard to think this is any connection to anyone for grudge related to my job. So who the hell, and what for what reason? First things first, doesn't seem like I'm going to get anything useful out of you, does it? In that case, might as well just finish this one off. Wake up, bandana man, and squeeze out of him. I guess I worked up. Rest assured, I don't kill people. Well, 
Sometimes they might wish I had, by the time I'm free. <laughs> this is like a male Plutia, but more badass. What are you quivering about? You're that scared to die? I realise that I'm still gripping the open knife in my hand. Ah, my bad. I'll give you this back later. I release the folding knife's lock and shut the blade away with a snap. But I recommend not carrying toys like this around. Having one on hand makes you want to use it. With something like that in this, your pocket, your mouth gets smarter. Ah, you start swigging around, picking stupid fights with people. And if you lose control, you end up doing something you can't take back. True. He's probably just trying to look cool, but depending on a toy like this to prop up your ego seems more pathetic from where I stand. <laughs> Uh-oh. The blinding beam of a flashlight shines through the dim alley into my face, and I instinctively shield my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No need to scream. I'm not an old man. My ears just work fine. <laughs> oh, it's... Oh, it's that guy! I remember right at the beginning! That's my line, I have to say, though. The police force in this town really is pretty impressive. Did you hear my scream? There's a reason. What's that supposed to mean? Almost sounds like you're thinking of me as that guy who's to cause trouble sooner or later. Talk about rude. Wait. I was being assaulted. Ah, great. Come on now, I'm the victim here, you know. I'm still holding a knife I took from the man in my hand. Guess I won't be able to talk my- Ah, damn it! Damn it. Guess that's that. And of course, she has to come back at this exact- Shit. I turn around to find Makina standing behind me. Our screen kinds in both hands. Aww. Uh, she's my classmate, I suppose. <laughs> no, I don't! Uh, well, for some reason I've got the feeling this policeman's mental image of me is getting worse by the second. Yeah, yeah fine. Don't worry, it's not like I'm getting arrested. I'll be back as soon as I explain the situation. So you go on ahead and head home. I drop a hand on Mac in his head with a gentle thumb and use my other hand to take the ice cream cone she bought for me. Aww, thanks to the ice cream. Oh, she's gonna cry. Huh? I said I'd come, didn't I? She doesn't have anything to do with it. Go ahead, Makina. Oh, I'm not going off to war. Don't make that face. I'll be back soon. When I give her back, back a light push, Makina slowly walks away, pausing several times to glance back at me. After watching her disappear around the corner, I turned to face the policeman. <laughs> Even I could be kind to children when the mood strikes me. The policeman points at my hand while I'm holding my caramel ribbon cone. Mind your own business. <laughs> he was actually serious about that type of ice cream. I sink my teeth into the ice cream Mackinac bought me. Was it nice? Oh, come on, I must know if it was nice. And so I find myself in this sweat box for the second time. Haven't been through this one or once already. I've gotten a little used to the place. While the uniformed cop was guiding me here, I looked around the station of four familiar faces. I noticed a young detective who interviewed me the other day slurping up soba noodles at his desk. Trying to send a small message of apology for the last time, I smiled and bowed my head lightly in agreement. The young detective scowled back bluntly and spun his chair away from me. Wow, come on. Still clutching his bowl. Possibly he's got some idea of my background now, as the gesture seemed to say, I've got no intention of playing nice with Ichigaya. Either way, it was a firm and ambiguous rejection. With an attitude like that, it's no wonder the police rarely get any civilian corporation these days. Yeah, that's just rude. I nearly told him as much, but managed to swallow the words down with a smile. Looking at things from this point of view, I'm definitely nothing but trouble. If he sits down across from me again, I think I might as well come out and give him a vocal apology at least. By betraying my expectations, the person who enters the room is the sly-looking elderly detective I spoke before my release last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazami-san. 
またあなたですかいやいやいやいやいやいや It's like a ho girl, god damn it Well, time's for I don't know if it's a vocal tick or what But this detective seems to enjoy repeating that word This little guy just loves to play the slow witted old man like that And suddenly he asks you how many times do I say well, just now To probe how mentally focused you are on the conversation If you respond don't know, haven't thrown off your off balance He'll barrage you with sharp to the point questions this sort of old culture, you can never let your guard down around. I was the victim of a unilateral assault. I didn't go looking to cause trouble. More importantly, have you ID'd the people who attacked me? Yes, that's right. Three people have a threat and a threat. They confirmed that the threat was confirmed. Who are they? I'm not particularly looking for revenge, if that's what you're worried about. <laughs> ということは、素性によってはお仲間に。あ、困りますな。確かに、ポンといなくなっても、誰も気に留めないような連中ですがね。うちは職安じゃないんですからな。は<笑>っ<笑>、just a bunch of thugs。そう考えてもらって、間違いありませんな。あの中の一人は、地元の暴力団とのつながりもありますが。ええー、まあ、極めて。Except for me, huh? Oh, come on! They attacked me! You need to spell that out. And they confessed anything about why they attacked me? Yes, yes, yes. That's what うまく説明できないんですがね。なんでもネットの掲示板に殺人依頼の書き込みをすると、いわゆる使用記人という連中が代理で実行してくれるらしいのですわ。But why? まあ、殺人依頼の書き込みってのはほとんどが冷やかしで、実際のところは気に入らない相手の名前を書いて。So somebody written like, is it Yumiko? Is it Yumiko right now? So they didn't have any idea of my background when he attacked me? Yes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my background when he attacked me. It's Yumiko. I can feel it's Yumiko. I can't feel it's Yumiko. I can't feel it's Yumiko. You placed a request. Yes. That's devil. Mao. I did. I couldn't trace the IP. Ah, eh. Nanda, the Hmm. What kind of an idiot runs a public net cafe without restrictions on BBS posting in this day and age? Regardless, I don't think there's much hope of finding the criminal among their customers. That's smart, though. That means it's very hard to trace them if they don't have an address that they do it at themselves. But risky. Yeah, yeah. Shikashi, Saikin, wa nan demonetto desu yo. Watashira, Jiji, ni wa chimpun kapun desu wa. Watashira wa ure. This old man's too happy. That guy physically hurt. If this was America, I'd see. Hmm. Oh, that's not good. 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 Oh, that's not what do you need me for? Hmm? You've already got my statement, right? So no koto nan desu ga ne? Konkai no ken wo shougai jigen toshite keiji kokuso saremasu ka? Not necessarily. I haven't suffered anything except the loss of my time and energy. Ma, sore ga yoroshii de shou na. Wow. Kazami-san, anata chotto yari sumi desu yo. Gyaku ni kajou bouei no sen de nebarareru to yakkei desu yo. Well, they, they went first. Tasu ria tokubetsu koumuin boukou ryoumiyakujai ってやつですわ. Otaku-san no soshiki jaa, saiban hiyo wa 
They try to me, I'll have a little talk with my superiors. You did say nobody would miss them if they fell off the face of the earth, right? Ooh. God damn, this is... <laughs> this guy's scary. Sorry, I'd appreciate that. Next time I stop by, I'll bring a present. <laughs> oh, come on. Ah, fine. Turn my back on the vaguely grating laughter of the sly old man. I, I leave the sweatbox. Alright, I'm gonna end it here. This feels like a nice place to end it off right now. God damn. So, wow, that was... I didn't expect that much to actually happen in this part. So this is actually a bit longer than I'd initially expected to do for a video, but... I can't say I was against it. I still love this game anyway. So, I've got nothing else to really say about it. So, all I can say now is thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want any more from me. And I'll see you in my next video. So, apologize, guys. I will indeed see you next time. Oof, my. Oh, my, Kazumi, you badass. Oh, damn it.